So a page full of formulas can look a little daunting. Maybe if we draw pictures, it'll be clearer. We'll see. So we'll start with a 45, 45, 90, the isosceles right triangle. This has two representations in pictures. The most popular says that we label the side, and then because it's isosceles, the other side is the same length. And to find the hypotenuse, the hypotenuse is going to be the square root of 2 times the length of one of the legs. So this makes it easy to remember. We have two sides, and we have a square root of 2 side. Simple. This particular representation is good if we know one of the sides. And we need to find the hypotenuse. Because whatever the side is, you just multiply it by the square root of 2, we're done. An alternate form works better if we are given the hypotenuse and we're supposed to find out what the length of the side is. Now, what we could do is we could just divide everybody by the square root of 2 here, which is ultimately what happens. But when we divide everybody by the square root of 2, then the side, each side, is going to equal the square root of 2 over 2 times the hypotenuse. And this side is going to be square root of 2 over 2 times the hypotenuse. This one works well if we know the hypotenuse and we're supposed to find the side. Once we have one side, of course, we have the other side. So, for example, example, we have a square that is six feet on each side. And I want us to find out how long is the diagonal. Well, we could just do the good old Pythagorean theorem. That would work fine. Or we could use the special 45, 45, 90 philosophy. And this would tell us that the hypotenuse here is going to have to equal the square root of 2 times 6. Now, in practical terms, that's not very helpful, but that is the most exact answer, taking 6 times the square root of 2. If, on the other hand, we have a right triangle that's isosceles, and they tell us that the hypotenuse is 9 meters, and they want us to find the height. They want us to find the altitude. So this is what we're trying to find, which is the length of one of these sides. It's a little awkward using this one. We can just go directly with this one, that each side is going to be the square root of 2 over 2 times whatever the hypotenuse was. In this case, it's going to be the square root of 2 over 2 times 9 meters. Or we could call that 4.5 times the square root of 2 meters. And that would be the exact 
altitude. In practical purposes, we'd probably be wanting to put it as a decimal. And we could have solved it using the 45 degrees, saying that if we're using this angle, we could take the opposite over the hypotenuse, do the sine of 45 degrees, and solve it that way. This actually was a pretty quick shortcut. This one wasn't bad at all either. In the 30, 60, 90 degree triangle, which is actually half of an equilateral triangle, the most popular representation is based on the length of the shortest side. The short side is the one that's across from the 30 degree angle. Then we have the middle side that's across from the 60 degree angle. And the longest side, the hypotenuse, of course, is across from the 90 degree angle. So actually the most popular way to describe it is in terms of the short leg. So the side opposite the 30 degree angle would be S. And then the side that is across from the 60 degree angle is going to be the square root of 3 times s times whatever the short side is. And the best part is the hypotenuse is going to be twice as long as the short side. So there's a very nice relationship here between the shortest side, the one opposite the 30 degree angle, and the hypotenuse. Alternately, it can be defined in terms of the hypotenuse. And in a lot of our trig formulas we're going to use in the future, this is how it's defined, even though this is the most popular picture, because this is easy to remember. We have a one side, a two side, and a square root of three side. I have to be careful, though. The square root of three doesn't go on the hypotenuse. Square root of three is about 1.87s. This one is 2s. This is bigger but it's still a one side, two side, square root of three side. Not a bad way to remember it. If we're given the sides represented based on the hypotenuse, for instance, they tell us what the hypotenuse is, find these other two sides, all we basically do is divide everybody here by two. The side that's across from the 30 degree angle is going to be one half of the hypotenuse. The side across from the 60 degree angle is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 times the hypotenuse. So neither formula is hard. It's not something you probably think of every day. If we are going to use these, it depends upon what information they give us. If they give us the length of the short side, then go ahead with this one. Twice as long is going to be the hypotenuse. Square root of 3 is times as long is going to be the side across from the 60 degree angle. If they give us the hypotenuse and want the two legs, then use this formula. Depends upon the situation. Once again, which formula works the best? Which picture? depends upon the situation we're given. In this problem here, we're given the base is 4 yards. If this is a 60 degree angle, then this has to be a 30 degree angle. And we're supposed to find the length of the side that's opposite the 60 degree angle. Well, we could just go with this right here, where everything is based on the short side. We know the short side. Short side's 4 yards. That tells us immediately that the hypotenuse over here is going to be 6 yards, and that the side we're looking for, the one across from the 60 degree angle, is going to be the square root of 3 times 4 yards. Or we could say 4 times the square root of 3. That's the exact most precise answer. Probably not what somebody who's your neighbor who wants your help is going to want, though. On this problem, 
still have a 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. This time, however, we know the hypotenuse. So rather than working with this, which is all based on the length of the short side, it might be easier to work with this representation, where everything's based on the length of the hypotenuse. The side across from the 60 degree angle is going to be the square root of 3 over 2 times whatever the hypotenuse is. And we can simplify that because the 2 and the 40 have a common factor. Let's take this over 1. So this would be the square root of 3 times 20 feet. Or we could say 20 times the square root of 3 feet. The College Board for the SAT exams goes with a popular method. The beginning of each section of the math test, this happens to be the calculator section, which lasts 55 minutes. They give you some background information. It's a good thing if you take time to read it before you have to start taking the test. And they have these little formulas here just for your help. You can see they use the most popular representation side across from the 30 degree angle is what everything's based on. The side that's the hypotenuse is two times that. And the side that's across from the 60 degree angle is the square root of three times the short side. They do a similar representation for the 45, 45, 90. They base their pictures on the length of the shorter sides. And the hypotenuse is the square root of two times that short side. Please avail yourself of this when you're taking the SAT. This could help you if you don't remember the formulas for the special right triangles because they haven't been that special to you. Also, if you don't know the formula for volume of a sphere. Also, for those of you who still don't know which one is the area formula, which one's the circumference on a circle. So I'm going to give you a chance to stare at these formulas for a few moments while I pull up the problems that we're going to practice. <laughs> 